Well, I, I wanted to highlight that uh, again because you are a national firm and you just happen to be in our backyard. So, you know, not taking that for granted and being a part of it as much as, as jailhouse is an attraction. Um, so are the entrepreneurs and leaders that we have in the community that really are the backbone and, and you know, make it what it is. Mm -hmm. So now fast forward all these years, you're here in Belmont. Do you still remember, maybe you've done a ton of projects. Do you remember your first project here in Belmont? Welcome and welcome back to Building Belmont. I'm your host, Keanu Trujillo, and today we're joined by the president of Health Design, formerly CL Health Design Architect, founded in 1969. Today we have the principal of the company, Tim Johnson, spending some time to share his story and share information about his business and some notable buildings around the community that we are now blessed with to see and experience that you helped to bring to life. So Tim, thank you for spending some time with us. Thank you, thanks for coming. Yeah. What brought you to Belmont, Tim? <clears throat> um, back in uh, 2006, I was working in Cleveland, Ohio my folks had retired to Hickory and so visiting them over the holidays, particularly in December or January, it's seeing that we can hit 60 degrees, um, yeah, 60 in January and still have blue skies um, is, is what initially attracted me to the area. And then of course, Charlotte and uh, surrounding areas were really booming and so um, it seemed like a good place to grow and uh, be part of the community, but also have an opportunity to participate in, in the architecture and the, the urban fabric that was here. Yeah. So 2006, this was not the same Belmont, nowhere near what it no, was today. No, so in, in 2006, <clears throat> um, there were maybe three or four restaurants, and now I think we have 17 plus, um, and some of them really great ones. Um, so, uh, it, but back in 2006, when I was trying to figure out where I wanted to live, um, um, at the time, NODA was really hopping. And, and I thought as a young person, especially coming from Cleveland, uh, an industrial sort of urban, um, heavily arts in, in, the, in the industrial side of industrial art, um, I was really attracted to NODA, but it was, even back then, it was quite expensive. Um, and, and traveling around Charlotte, looking at different communities, I, I, I was really drawn to Belmont. And, and part of me couldn't understand why it was that Belmont wasn't, wasn't hopping. Why, why at that time, why wasn't it booming? It was so close to downtown Charlotte um, with easy access to downtown. Um, it, it baffled me. And, and as I reflected back and looked at other communities, I couldn't figure out why at some point Belmont wasn't going to pop. Yeah. And, and that's happened. Now. Do you feel like a, a, a bit of a, of a genius now, like you timed the market a little bit to uh, get in early? <laughs> I don't know. I, it, there, there was a lot of um, serendipity and, and it happened to be just at the time, this was affordable for me to be here. Um, uh, to get a place within walking distance to downtown, to have a, a walkable downtown with a very authentic urban fabric, um, it, was, it was really an incredible opportunity. And, and like I said, affordable. So, Well, it's, it's interesting how you have been such an instrumental part of the design of what Belmont has become. And when you came here and saw, not to say it was a, a blank canvas, but there was a lot of opportunity for growth. And your design has helped to really lead us forward and continues to. You have projects like the Jailhouse, Stowe Park, that of course are cornerstones of the community. And then other ones like the Trolley Barn and Piedmont Lithium, uh, Dynamo 31, these other projects that are up and coming still, so helping to, to pave that. Have you thought about how you've been a hand in that? Uh, <laughs> well, we've been blessed with uh, opportunity. Um, Whenever we have an opportunity to work within our community, um, we try to, we give it our all. And um, I, I hope that that's paid off. We're certainly excited by the projects we've been involved with here. Um, seeing buildings, the jailhouse was vacant and had been vacant for a long time. 
to see that building now occupied. Um, people coming from all over actually to see that building, to, to, <laughs> to go to the jailhouse and have a whiskey and a cigar. People travel now to see that building. Really? And so it's bringing people from um, outside of Belmont in and, um, and they get a chance to see what Belmont's about. Um, so, well, so, yeah. We, uh, that, that happens to be one of my favorite spots. And of course, I'm, I'm, I'm very partial to, to whiskey and bourbon. So, yeah. of course, but yeah, it is really something I always like to sh share that story when I'm taking, you know, friends or family through downtown and stop and say, you know, uh, Old Stone was the police department, behind it was the jailhouse, and now it's still the jailhouse and, you know, what it is. So, it is, it is an awesome, you know, thing to have. But, you know, I'll say this because. I uh, assume that most of your book of business actually isn't in this area because you service clients across the country. So I want to highlight how lucky we are to have you in our community mm -hmm. because when things are so close, they just kind of get taken for granted. Mm -hmm. And so for you to be here in our community, what, what percentage of your portfolio of your book of business would you say is actually local versus uh, everywhere else? Um, <clears throat> I would say our local projects, um, local to Belmont is, is in our surrounding areas, maybe 15%, maybe wow. 20%. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, <laughs> um, but, but we probably spend the most time on them. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted to highlight that uh, again, because you are a national firm and you just happen to be in our backyard. So, you know, not taking that for granted and being a part of it as much as, as jailhouse is an attraction. Um, so are the entrepreneurs and leaders that we have in the community that really are the backbone and, and you know, make it what it is. Mm -hmm. So now fast forward all these years, you're here in Belmont. Do you still remember, maybe you've done a ton of projects. Do you remember your first project here in Belmont? Yeah, uh, I, I believe it was. We got connected, well, to back up uh, just a second, the firm has a history of, of doing work in Gaston County um, and downtown Belmont, but even before my time, um, and, and McAddenville. Um, and, and I believe downtown Gastonia as well. The firm's been around for 53 years, and so we weren't, we weren't foreign to doing work in Gaston County, if you will. Um, but, but we've certainly, I think, um, people have maybe gotten to know me or heard about me uh, or the firm and reached out about opportunities. And the first one, I think, was Dick Cromlish came to us. Um, he wanted to do a, a live-work project with an existing building adjacent to City Hall. And um, at the time that we did that, there was a new section in the North Carolina Building Code, if memory serves. And uh, probably the first live-work under that code, if you will, um, certainly in Gaston, maybe North Carolina, I don't know. Mm. Um, but um, that was maybe one of our first projects, and it was fairly simple, you know, the goal was to not change more than we had to, but to, to get it under that section of the code and successfully permit it. Um, and, then, and then at some point we got connected with Matt Matinata, and he had the vision to to change uh, the jailhouse into what it is now. Um, I mean, you, you mentioned something about us and, and the, our opportunities here locally and how we've shaped the fabric, but, but one of the things that we do is try to understand our client's vision and, and figure out how that uh, can materialize in, in, in an architecture, in, in an expression of architecture. Um, so it, it's not just us, it's, it's our clients and what they convey to us and the process we take the projects through. Um, we, we can't design in a vacuum, if you will. So, yeah. um, but the jailhouse was, uh, I believe, the second uh, sort of larger project in Belmont. And, um, and yeah, that was just a unique project and actually a really challenging one. Uh, because it was a jail, it was very stout in construction. Jails, even today, the walls have to have rebar four inches on center. Uh, you don't typically build a wall that way. Um, it's so to modify that, was, it was extensive. It, mm -hmm. was, it was tough, it was a big undertaking on Matt's part um, and the contractor. So, um, but, but what a unique project. Um, so From the, uh, and this is again, com completely showing my, my ignorance to 
what goes into doing something like this. At what point as an architectural firm, as a design firm, my thought is you're probably the first one to get called, but, but at what point in the process does someone say, okay, I have a vision and I want to start to bring it to life. Do they, do they call you? At what point do you get introduced to the conversation? Yeah, it, it depends on the project. It, um, sometimes we'll have developers come to us and they already have a civil engineer involved. They already have a bit of a site plan. And, and uh, in some cases, it's fine. Uh, some developers, developers are, are very savvy and, and skilled, um, but um, w we always like to be brought in as early as possible because we, we may uh, see something and think about it differently than a civil engineer and, and suggest something different that the team or the ownership maybe hasn't thought of. Um, sometimes it could be a master planning project so um, we, we just finished master planning 70,000 square feet of uh, mixed use with retail and uh, wow. brewery and uh, office building, um, food hall, et cetera. Um, and, and, and actually we were brought in a little bit late on that game and, and the civil engineer had been developing something but it wasn't really gelling with the ownership. And so, and, and, and that's a good op, um, example of where we came in. We're able to hear the key points that the owner was trying to get at and, and massage things in a way to get it to gel and um, in a way that they were happy with. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, other times, and maybe in, in Matt's case, you know, they had a vacant building and a vision to do something with it. He heard about us and reached out to us. And so sometimes it's word of mouth. Yeah. You know. So how often do you get to actually drive the vision or the support? Sounds like with Matt, he said, yeah, I want to do something with it. And you get kind of a blank slate to work with versus someone that says, I pretty much have what I want now. Add the finishing touches. Um, <clears throat> um, it depends. Again, we're, we're careful about the kind of work that we take on. Um, we are involved with a lot of prototype work. Um, and in that case, you, you have a prototype um, that has branding that is specific to a retailer or a car wash. Or, or and, and in some cases, we've develop those prototypes and so we're adapting the prototypes to a new location and so in that case uh, early early on in the development of a prototype and a brand for something like for example a car wash like how does that get branded so we were on on that we were brought in very early and helped them um, come up with this brand and prototype um, in other cases, we do work for developers that they, they already have the prototype, they know what they're doing, and um, we're, we're figuring out how to adapt it to a new location. Um, that, that's specific to a certain kind of work that we do. Um, um, locally, if, if somebody comes to us and has a vision, um, we try to understand what they're trying to get at with that vision. It, it may or may not feel that it's architecturally prudent or fits in, and in, in which case we'll take them through a process to show them maybe what their initial vision is and looks like. Um, but then something else that they may not have thought of that, that perhaps works better or fits better in the context of where we're designing. Mm -hmm. So that may be a long-winded answer. Yeah, so. well, it is interesting. And again, of course, uh, stories, connection, and information as far as our, our platform goes. And there are going to be some people in the community that did not know you or really behind the brand or even understand that it is a locally founded company, you know, over mm -hmm. 53 years old. And so some will hear that and say, well, that's kind of boring to me. For me, it's absolutely fascinating. Mm -hmm. And others will hear it and absolutely lean in. So when we get to hear who's listening, they say, man, I really loved this one or that one. It's all about preference. Yeah. So we really like to just connect with the person and, of course, the, the entity of the business. And you know, someone listen, listening to this now may say, hey, I actually want to go work for them now. Mm -hmm. I have my aspirations now to join that team. So we never know, but no, it is a great answer. And I wanted to know a little bit more about your process. How do you get a vision from someone? Do they, 
I, I don't know how often they come with some kind of, of rendering or even some kind of concept and then you get to make it one of these. And if you're watching on YouTube, we have some of CL Health's designs here behind us. But how do you capture what they're trying to say? Uh, there's the old saying, do you see what I'm saying? Which is you know, kind of leadership, but also creative. How, how do you get to this point from a, a concept? <clears throat> um, we're trying to understand the ingredients that go into the recipe. Um, it, 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 our, our sort of design process, if you will, is a little bit like cooking, right? So you have a number of ingredients. Uh, we're trying to understand uh, what about those different ingredients is most important to the owner, like in a very big picture, right? It's not necessarily, I need this many spaces and they need to be this big. That's almost the second step. The first step is to understand the, the vision of the, of the ingredients, the, the micro at a micro level and then a, and then a bigger sort of macro level. And then from a process standpoint, we take those ingredients. Um, it's usually a team of people that will um, get together and uh, brainstorm, um, um, come up with different ideas and, and sketch them out. We do a lot of computer modeling and rendering. Um, a, a lot of times those ingredients, if you will, will get put together in different ways um, by different people. Um, and then we sit down as a team and analyze um, what's been put together and what architecturally maybe works best. And of you know, 10, in some cases 20, <coughs> Uh, design options, we'll internally boil those down to about three that have good merit. And, and some of them may be something that I came up with or was passionate about or feel strongly about. Um, and, and others uh, may be from somebody younger in the office or somebody older in the office. It's so it's a collaborative design process that enables us to come up with a number of different ideas <clears throat> that, that all of which may have been important to the owner but maybe haven't been put together in a way that they were originally thinking. Yeah. And so in some cases uh, the design options will be variations of different people's ideas. It may be something that I felt strongly about or I think works really well and somebody else may have a solution that also works well and we figure out, oh, if we put these two together. Now we've really got something that hits on a number of points that were important to the owner. Yeah, yeah. the uh, you know the your approach and the way that you've conducted yourself, even pre-recording, really shows a lot of selflessness and the absence of pride and ego that really it sounds like your line of work requires. So if there's so much pride and ego about your design or what's best, because best is subjective, then it's about the person and not necessarily about the project. So <coughs> I'm sensing a lot of that. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, so in the history of architecture, in the history of architects, there have been a lot of great architects who also have great egos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I think that, um, I think that for me anyways, this certainly still exists. Um, but for me, and where we're practicing and the way we practice today, and I think the, the way a firm needs to practice in order to see continuation, longevity of practice, um, for me personally, it's about the process of making architecture and how, you, and how you arrive at it. And then of course, there's a lot that goes beyond that, the delivery of construction documents and getting out in the field and making sure things are implemented correctly. Uh, <clears throat> but, but the process is, is to me what differentiates firms today. And, and for me it was important and it is important that, that we not bring ego to the table when we're talking about architecture. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, that process is what's important and, and um, what will allow a firm to continue into the future. Because if everybody's brought in and bought in to the process behind how we create architecture, I don't need to necessarily be there to drive that. Mm 
Yeah. Wow. Well, I've definitely enjoyed getting to learn from you. There's just so much application to leadership in you know how you go about your process and what you've done here. And like I said, I want to take it for don't want to take it for granted that you're in our backyard and you're serving our community in 2006 till now. You've been a, an instrumental part of that growth and of course still looking forward. So designs like the trolley barn that we're all going to get to enjoy and experience. I've loved that design and now that I know the originator, I love it even more. Uh, it's just something that's cool to look at. So I'm excited for it to be finished. But uh, clo I want to close with this. Chet Helt founded the company in 1969. 53 years later, we're still here, we're still going. And in 2012, or around about then, is when you acquired the company and, and took the helm. And you've under, recently underwent a rebrand, and you've decided to continue to hold on to the name as Helt Design. And you mentioned something pre recording that I want to honor that name, but I also want this to continue after me. So whoever else happens to step in, they can still continue to honor that, and it's not about me. Mm -hmm. That is so laced in legacy. And, and, and the infinite mindset. So I want to hear from you, you know, what does legacy mean to you and what's the legacy that you hope that you establish and that you leave here in the community and beyond? Um, <clears throat> um, the, the, there's a lot in that uh, question. <laughs> uh, uh, for me, um, the architecture that, uh, that uh, creates the urban fabric that we live in and walk in. Um, hopefully um, the buildings and, and many of which we've had the opportunity to work on uh, will continue to be useful to our community um, and, and be part of that positive environment that we live in long after we're not here anymore. It's so the, the care in the design and, and the process of making architecture needs to be strong uh, so, that <clears throat> so that those buildings, when they're redeveloped or created anew, um, are the best that they can be within so many factors that have to be balanced, including budget, including code, which was a challenge on Jailhouse, given how big that was, or small rather, and um, so, so legacy for me um, is about, as an architect, is about the approach we take and making sure the design that we end up, is, end up with on a project or on a building existing or new is the best that we can put together given the variables that we have to work with, given the ingredients that we have to work with. Um, and so for me, that's legacy within our, our sort of built environment. And then for the firm, we are actively trying to structure and position, look for talent, bring talent up within the firm so that the processes that um, have been here for the last um, 10 years or so since I've been here and, and added to them and then the 43 years before that can continue on. Um, and, and my vision, my goal is that, that those things will be strong enough to carry the firm forward um, for another 53 years. So. I have a mindset in, in business that if we see the pinnacle of the success then we may have done something wrong. Yeah. So, you know, it, was, it wasn't, it wasn't long-term enough or we weren't thinking beyond the next generation. And, and I, I see you exemplify that in saying that it's about how are we setting up the next generation mm -hmm. to carry the torch forward. And of course, everything that you get your hands on here as an, as an artist, as an architect, uh, you know, we get to all enjoy as a community. And I heard something once that I continue to think about every day and every time that I think about it just is, is just awesome, truly that everything that we experience, that we drive, that we walk in, that we have, once existed inside of someone's brain. Mm -hmm. it, it, we're walking in someone's imagination constantly. Mm -hmm. So this room, you know, health, everything, it was all once just someone's imagination. And you have the charge and the responsibility and 
the privilege to take that imagination and bring it to life. Mm -hmm. So thank you for what you're doing for our community, for the design, the intentionality, you know, knowing some of the projects that you've worked on, you obviously can tell that they honor the history while also seeing what could be or what can be in the future. So thank you so much for your time again today, Tim. Uh, we'll definitely be having some more conversations. Maybe as the trolley barn op opens up, we can speak more specifically on specific projects yeah, if you're okay with that. Oh yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Thanks, yeah. Tim. Thank you. Joining us for another episode of the Building Belmont podcast. I'm your host, Keanu Trujillo, reminding you to subscribe, rate, and review on your favorite podcast platform. Be sure to like and subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. And of course, share with a friend, share with a neighbor. We'll see you again next week as we capture more stories, create more connection, and share more information here on the Building Belmont podcast.